We've given you a few minutes to dissect the earnings. Your key takeaway. Yep, so thanks for having me on, Taylor. The key takeaway is that Apple continues to benefit from low expectations as it transitions away from the iPhone. You talked there about the success of Apple Card and how they're going to leverage Apple Card to offer interest rate uh, free financing for future iPhones. So you look at their financial services efforts, you look at the upcoming content efforts, you look at healthcare. All these things enabling Apple to diversify away from the mature smartphone industry, and you're seeing that in the stock, and it's very good news for the shareholders. Tom, what do you need to see from this company to take this stock next leg higher? We talk about this as a stock that's up more than 50% for the year. It reached another record high this, this week. What else do you need to see from this company to prove another bull thesis? Yep, so it's an excellent question. And now what I'm trying to determine is for next year's upgrade cycle on the iPhone, what are the expectations on a 5G device? Will investors be looking for a global rollout of a 5G device or will they only be looking for a regional rollout? Because I think the argument now can be made that over the next two years, you have the potential for unit growth in smartphones to return as they start rolling out 5G devices. So I think that that could be the next leg up for the stock as we look for expectations of a 5G device for next fall. Tom, I'm taking a poll of every analyst on the street, so I pose the same question to you. What percent of revenue within the company needs to come from services where you get to a point where you are no longer worried about the highly cyclical iPhone revenue? Is it 30 percent, 50 percent? So the way that I think about it, I guess, is slightly the inverse of what you're talking about, which is if you look at last fiscal year, iPhone sales were 60 percent of total sales. So what does success look like for Apple from an iPhone standpoint? And I think if that 60% of sales in five years can be 33% of sales. So the dominance of one device goes from essentially two thirds to one third, then that would be wild success. So if you invert that and say basically non iPhone sales go from 40% to two thirds, that would be a different way of perhaps looking at the numbers you're looking at. Tom, we're hearing on the analyst call right now that wearables are up more than 50% from a year ago. This is according to the CFO. Is wearables automatically assuming that will be a growth driver for the company? Uh, the answer is yes. And really, if you think about it, the amazing thing about their success in wearables is that the battery life for a lot of their uh, smartwatches remains limited. And I think the fact that they've been able to do so well with what you would have thought would have been a gating factor to succeeding in wearables, meaning having a watch that doesn't last 24 hours, is very remarkable. But again, I think the data point they provided, Taylor, that was so interesting was 17% sales growth when you adjust for the iPhone. So they do have a fair amount of growth going on if you can set aside, again, the mature iPhone market. Tom, finally here, I want to come and take a look at a chart that I'm showing for our Bloomberg audience. You know the story. It is total cash, which is still above $200 billion, minus about $100, or not, you know, $100 billion of debt or so, which still leaves you about net cash of $100 billion. Where should the company be using their cash? So the big story has been returning cash to shareholders, both via dividends and via buybacks. But I think what they need to lean into is basically uh, new product and new services to, again, diversify their revenue away from the iPhone. So you're seeing that with more recently kind of a dip in the toe on content where the original expectation was a billion in spending and that went to six billion in spending. But we'd like to see them lean more heavily into services and devices that aren't iPhones in addition to returning money to shareholders and I think this stock will continue to run.